All right, we're watching a football game right now. Two o'clock's just come in, so let's go ahead and check the satellites here. Look at Milton, and I'm not so sure that's a tropical storm here. Let me go ahead and add that tap. Let me go ahead and see what this new tap has to offer here. Uh oh. Hey everybody, it's I Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. So, pretty crazy to see this right here, right? Three, not only named storms, but hurricanes. All of them at least at Category 1 right now, too, ironically. But, what we're mainly going to be talking about, of course, is Milton, which is already undergoing rapid intensification. You can see what he's doing on satellite here. Really getting its act together quickly. Very much a concerning issue there that we have especially as this heads towards the panhandle florida tampa bay unfortunately still looks like the point of interest i'm getting the feeling that this is probably what we're going to be dealing with of course as we know these storms like to change course and wobble a bit but based off of what i've been seeing out of model guidance here i'm relatively confident about this but if i'm hoping for a miracle i'm just going to go ahead and say that we don't want it to go north we really don't want this to hit anybody at this point because this environment is so primed still even after helene going through the waters are still very warm here and the wind shear is going to be light for a good bit here so this storm will have plenty of time to thrive here on its in its current uh situation here the ford speed's only at seven miles an hour so with that in mind here we know that this thing's not necessarily in a hurry which is not boating well for us either so definitely hoping that people are heeding evacuation orders here because i already know that a state of emergency has been issued for the peninsula here probably for most of the state at this point here so we're going to be talking mainly about the threats at this point the biggest threat in my eyes especially considering the fact that if you look on satellite you can see a lot of clouds over there towards florida as it is that is not from milton at all actually that's a low pressure system that's out ahead of it that's been dropping a lot of rain as is so big time problems already issued causing issues over here and we actually have a moderate risk for flash flooding issued as it is over towards miami so we need to be extra watchful over there within the next five days here of course where the storm makes landfall on the left side is usually where the heaviest rain will end up being <clears throat> that's exactly what we have going on there as well so anywhere from that i-95 corridor off to the west here right now you guys are at a moderate risk and it would not surprise me in the slightest in fact i would even expect a high risk to end up being issued so we need to be extra watchful of that flash flooding threat there's also storm surge which is a big concern as well we need to be watchful especially over towards the tampa bay area any area that you're starting to see the orange pixels showing up here that's where we have life-threatening storm surge storm surge that is above six feet in height here as we know the western peninsula of florida is historically known for being below sea level so very much prone to storm surge flooding so you can see here there's the orange it's a legend indicator right there Pretty much all of tampa bay is in the orange or even heading into the red which is about nine feet plus so we're almost a story high in the storm surge here even towards sarasota towards cape coral all throughout the western panhandle here i'm very concerned about that storm surge threat so definitely need to be on watch as we continue to go forward here towards the eastern half of the state it's not going to be so much with the storm surge it's more so just going to be the amount of rainfall that we can get with this thing so Outside of that, not much has really changed with the expectation for tropical storm force winds. This is really the time when preparations should stop or you should be already on your way out of the area. By the time the tropical storm force winds come, it's not going to get much better from that point. The conditions will start to deteriorate more and more leading up to landfall. So the time frame is still the same. Uh, Tuesday evening, 8 p.m. is when we'll start to see those tropical storm force winds hit the Keys and then eventually the Western Peninsula. Let's give or take maybe two or three hours difference here. But fact in the matter is we do need to be extremely watchful from this point here. So from that point, 
we have to also be watchful of tropical of the probability of hurricane force winds right now still those are pretty low considering the fact that we're still a pretty good ways out this will progressively increase with each update here so if you're anywhere again on that west coast of florida you i'm telling you you should probably leave if you stay in that cone of uncertainty and you just try to wait it out bad things could happen i'll just leave it at that i'll let your mind wander here but <clears throat> another alarming trend that i'm seeing is we're seeing a lot of models now starting to push this towards category four some of these are pushing this towards a mid-grade category four which is winds at about 140. this is actually the same intensity that we had helene make landfall at a few of these models are even pushing towards category five which i'm concerned about as well i'm not ruling that out definitely not off the table at all but we're definitely hoping that this situation does not occur here that being said still need to be very much weather aware over the course of the next few days will be we're pretty much in storm mode phase two i guess you would say on the channel here like i said i'm going to be making a post soon that kind of goes over what those terms that i'm creating as we speak here but basically it might be one two videos a day almost guaranteed at this point leading up to the landfall and probably a stream will be coming soon discussing the full-on impacts as we get closer to the event so looking at the environment here we're really just looking for any chance for this storm to weaken here, and it just doesn't really look like that's going to be the case, unfortunately. With Helena, Helena had definitely had its issues with wind shear. Maybe just before landfall we could have that issue, but look, just look at how low the pressure ends up getting, 940 millibars. We're definitely making a close pass to Category 4, if not even higher than that. This ends up making landfall, according to the HWRF, as a 943 millibar storm, which is low in category four, I would say, at this point. So a lot of the models have been kind of showing this. This is one of the, my favorites here. It's been a very accurate model in recent time, especially. But this ends up going through the entire peninsula as a hurricane here. So hurricane warnings will probably be issued within the next day or so for Florida, I would say. The entire peninsula here and maybe even some parts of the panhandle if we're not if i'm not mistaken here we'll just see how the wind field ends up uh, progressing as it goes forward here the storm is still growing in size here as we speak even so if we go ahead and take a look at the environment a little further here we're looking for any sort of dry air that could also affect the storm here air looks pretty moist so like i said not really much of anything that's going to be slowing this down here like I said, maybe towards the tail end, we might get a little bit of wind shear, a little bit of dry air to come into play here. That's really what we're hoping for to just try and get this thing to slow down. But like I said, hopes are not really high on this one. I really hate giving bad news like this. It always kind of bumps me out a little bit, if I'm being honest. But we're here to tell you the truth to try to keep you safe, keep you weather aware here. We aren't trying to scare anyone at all. That's not my goal in the slightest. But... It's another HWRF model here. This one has it even stronger, which is very much a concerning look here. This heads right towards the bay here in a spot that we do not want it at. All those winds will be pushing that surge on shore in this scenario here. So again, if you're over here towards the Tampa Bay region, areas up towards the north even as well, I would still, I would highly urge you i'm urging you to evacuate here i would highly consider it if i were you do not ride this one out bad things could happen very bad things so that being said we'll go ahead and also take a look at the rainfall totals that we're getting we're going to do our operational model comparison here I haven't done this in a while but over here towards the central panhandle of course on that left side is where we're going to have the heaviest rainfall totals here easily expecting well over 10 inches plus of rain maybe even pushing over towards a foot if not more than that towards the southern areas we're still dealing with an excessive amount of rainfall about maybe five to seven inches pretty easily the mean i would say is somewhere between four to six at this point but of course this is only one model we're looking at if we keep moving canadians models a little bit more aggressive gfs is kind of pushing this a tad bit more to the north here towards the big bend which is definitely not something that we don't want it's definitely not something we want getting my words all sorts of messed up here but 
like I said, I'm very, uh, very nervous about how this will turn out here. But across the board here, whether it's the GFS, the British models, or the European models here, Bullseye definitely seems to be right around that Tampa Bay region, maybe just off to the north for the rainfall. And this, of course, still isn't including the storm surge threat that we're most likely going to deal with when this thing makes landfall here. So that being said, we'll do the best we can here, and hopefully we'll be able to cover this event from start to finish. I'll try and rush my way through work as fast as I can. But that being said, you guys make sure that you are heeding the warnings, evacuation orders, especially anyone that is in Florida. That being said, that's the end of this video, and I will see you in the next one, which will probably be tomorrow morning. Don't be surprised if we end up seeing a major hurricane by morning even. That being said, you guys take care, stay safe, and have a good rest of your night.